Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. The Huntsman Winter's War Movie Thoughts I am gonna go straight into the notes. I thought the mirror was extremely easy to break there in the very, very small climax. I mean, I get that, you know, it's it's significant that that the mirror is broken because Freya realizes that she has, excuse me, she has to stop her sister and that, excuse me, includes destroying the mirror, but yeah, it was, that's all it took, you know, it's, yeah, and the, the, the climax is really really small the the movie spends a lot of time talking about armies but we never really see that much of what we we see the we know that Freya has an army and when she comes to you know when we first realize that Sarah was working for Freya you know, she has some, you know, a, a number of huntsmen with her. But, you know, and, and they told, you know, we are going to send our army against Snow White's army. And, you know, they, they really shouldn't have had that line in there because immediately it's, you know, and that's at, it's right there in the trailers. I mean, I'm not, like, upset that it wasn't in the film or something, but... Yeah, you know, you're you're giving that expect you're you're telling people to expect that, to expect armies fighting armies, which we got in the first one, which we never get in this one. You know, and in the climax, suddenly the you know instead of huntsmen fighting other huntsmen particularly much, it's just that all of them kind of agree to fight with Eric and Sarah and then <laughs> Ravenna's venom attack kills almost all of them, and okay, then it's just Eric taking out Ravenna, and that's uh, also just easy enough without any, you know. <laughs> I I really should have been surprised, shouldn't I, that it wasn't. Sarah, who got to, but Eric, yeah. The the Ravenna we see in the first one really doesn't strike me as someone who would trick someone else into killing a child so that she could get, you know, for for the. Yeah, you know, it. it's because if that wasn't Ravenna causing that, then how is Ravenna at all relevant? You know, or, yeah, otherwise it's just, well, that was quite the coincidence that, you know, it wasn't Ravenna's doing, but nevertheless something tragic happened to Freya, so that, yeah, you know, you could... It's possible that this actually started out as an entirely unrelated script, or at least that part of this script started out unrelated, and it just happened that they needed to put Ravenna in, so they made her Freya's sister, and then, you know, that whole... Because, really, you could have this story and have it have nothing to do with the first movie. If it's not Snow White's kingdom, if, you know, the 
the mirror itself could easily be changed. The, the mirror is, as it is, is very, very different from, you know, we, we barely see the, you know, the, the magic mirror man. And I do think that it's too bad that the, the trailers pretty much give away. I mean, when you watch the trailers, yeah, okay, clearly Ravenna had a hand in Freya's baby being murdered there. You know, we, we don't know, you know, and the film plays it as a twist. It's only at the end that we find out that she did tell the, the baby daddy to kill, you know, and that's how, you know, then we see the, the mirror whispering, kill for me, you know, other times. So, yeah. And it's also the, the climax, you know, the, yeah, I'll get more into that. Um... So Ravenna says she stayed in the mirror somehow. The the again, having just rewatched the first movie, I guess I mean she does die right in front of the mirror. So I guess the idea is that as that's happening, her essence is being sucked into the mirror or or something. I mean, we don't see the the whole thing. We just see that she is dying in front of the mirror, and then that you know. So I guess it's possible, but it's it's really just so that they can, yeah, so that Ravenna can come back, you know, and without it being just, you know, that that was also when when I first heard of it, I figured prequel. You know, and that it would just, you know, focus on Freya instead of Ravenna. But bringing Ravenna back from the dead, yeah. And she said, you know, she's something between dead or alive. And yeah. And it's it's one of those amazing things where, you know, oh, she's back from the dead. And she says she's not quite alive, but yet she's still incredibly powerful. And it really didn't take much of a ritual for Freya to, you know, get the, yeah, to for, for Freya to get Ravenna out of the mirror. I mean, again, like the, the mirror breaking itself, it I get that the idea is that Freya is incredibly magical, but there's just, there's nothing. And again, it's because in the first one, there really isn't, something established particularly it's just Ravenna has some magic the mirror is magical and that's about it so the moment that Freya has to use the mirror they kinda just have to hand wave it away and yeah When, you know, Sarah literally, you know, genuinely says to Eric, I get it, you, you know, you did the, the, you know, you, you, you passed the test, and yet I don't love you automatically, you know, it's, it's not, that wasn't all that needed to happen kind of thing, and she's, you know, she's saying, I am not an object that you have won. You know, and this is, it's, it's it's music to my feminist ears, but she's literally saying, this is why this is the way it is. You know, it's, it's just, it's way too on the nose, where the first is much more, <laughs> yeah, R with Ravenna's, Yeah, both her, you know, her motivation and her methods do follow this idea of, you know, women can rule men through their their beauty, but then, but the moment that a man no longer is attracted to a woman, he will abandon her. That was, you know, 
that was interesting and it wasn't too yeah and Sarah is sort of seen as you know she has you know she she is it it's it's taken its toll on her to be in you know in the dungeon for seven years although ultimately we don't know if that is quite true because she's also been the you know maybe she kept being put back into the dungeon whenever she wasn't working but yeah and we have N Nyon's brother and it's yeah I, I I get it I see the resemblance but yeah he, he certainly started out as annoying and the you know they kind of were trying to make Sarah be similar to Snow White you know she was you know in the dungeon for years and then she comes back and then she has to fight you know to yeah but it's it's it doesn't quite work it's you know it's the thing of you know getting catching lightning in a bottle a second time i do think that the thing with you know the basically the ice wall showing something through the the wall that didn't happen but which is maybe like the worst thing that the person could imagine or, and which would work you know she didn't she didn't want she wanted to keep Sarah so she made her think that Eric betrayed her and she you know to do that she had to get rid of Eric so she made him think that Sarah was dead I thought the the bit with Tull was pretty decent and how he still had the the scar kind of from her holding her icy fingers to his face like that. I, I feel like that's something where in the first movie we would have actually seen her be touching his face as it happened instead of just seeing the result afterwards. But then, you know, ultimately it doesn't really go anywhere because Tull is just killed with the rest of them in the climax. I I did think that the the whole romance thing with the with Freya's daughter did make sense because the you know whether or not you you know know that Ravenna was the one who had him you know kill the the, the daughter ultimately you know it's like she says he has been promised to someone else and you know then when he you know, kills the the child and says, "I had to," you know, and and he even said, you know, "We'll we'll meet," you know, out there together at that time. So, you know, he knew that she would be out there and she would be away from the child. So, the you know, although it really, if she had been like, "I I can get married with my child on my arm," it would have completely screwed up the plans. But such goes you know fairy tale and the like writing where you need things to be yeah basically the the idea that he he couldn't be seen to have had a child with someone else 
you know, that that would ruin things, that works. That makes sense as this, again, you know, kind of medieval thing and as showing how the, the women are the ones who are most ruined by this kind of, you know, by, by the way the, the, you know, the genders relate in, you know, when, when, and yeah, I, I do think that that worked pretty, pretty nicely. And right before, not long before the climax, we of course have Eric, you know, he, he has not seen that Ravenna is there, so he shoots at, you know, the, the evil queen. Ravenna catches the arrow and says, I missed you, and he's like, ditto. The... I've already mentioned some that, you know, the, the climax is much smaller. You know, in the first one, we literally have, you know, an army of dozens, maybe a hundred or so, taking a castle as they're being fought off by siege weapons. And, yeah, and, and we also have, you know, whole armies taking on other whole armies. Yeah, it's is really too bad. I, I will say, again, the the action is great, and I, I like that every action scene had someone incredibly capable, you know, at, at least one, you know, basically there's, there's no action scene in the movie that doesn't involve at least one huntsman of, yeah. And the, you know, they of course destroy the mirror to have Ravenna's death this time have finality now that they brought her back in spite of her very clear death in the first one. And yeah, it just, it, it feels less earned than in the first one. Because in the first one, it really is the culmination of Snow White's growth of her arc that, you know, she, yeah, she, she ends up against all odds, you know, managing to kill Ravenna and breaking the spell and, yeah, the... And in this, don't even really have that Ravenna loses because of hubris. And, you know, in this, she, she isn't killed by someone who's completely new to fighting. I guess, you know, one thing this has on the climax of the first is there's no kind of busy work kind of thing to make the climax seem more epic. I really did think that, you know, from the from the trailers, it looked more, it looked like we'd get much more of an actual fight between the two sisters when in this, it's really, you know, there's, she does the, the hand wave swipe thing and they, they hug and she freezes her and and then she stabs her with the venom thing and that's yeah that's pretty much it one thing that i you know i in the first one we do genuinely have kristen stewart alone in a forest with someone known to be a killer and she's in love with this individual and then th there's even you know her 
acting like she's in pain from whether or not she can be with the person she loves. Yeah, it's it it's very twilighty for a film that's otherwise, you know, hoping to kind of you know prove she she isn't just twilight. The I I know I, this isn't a video about the first film specifically, but I do just briefly have to talk about the the wedding night in the first film. It's just such there's so much there in that in just that one scene. We start with Ravenna being this you know the you know the the film is you know, in part from this kind of modern perspective on gender relationships. But here we see the, you know, this more traditional kind of relationship. So she's just lying on her back and just letting the man take her like a good Christian woman. And then I, I'm not trying to pick on Christianity, not not in this particular instance. It's just, you know, they, yeah, it was Christian, yeah. And, you know, she's, she's lying there and she's talking about how, you know, she, this, you know, the, the how a king like him can just completely throw away a woman like her. And suddenly we, you know, we can tell the, the poison in the drink is, you know, taking hold. And as he is, you know, take, you know, yeah, as he's rendered, yeah, you know, she ends up sitting atop him like, you know, she's, she's in charge, she's dominant. And then she penetrates him, and the you know, yeah, it's 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 very very nicely done. A little surprised not to see the Silent Hill Four wall creature return in the LSD forest, or the LSD forest in general, and. You know, the with with Snow White not being in it, you know, the the people who are attempted saved are actually saved. Also, since you know, Henry Cavill's Superman and the Bat Flag is not in the film. Seriously, in the first film, for as much as Snow White tries to save people, she does not have a good track record. The only person she manages to save, who's actually saved at the time, not just later, is Eric. And he's part of the title. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.